So in this video, we're going to look at how we can find the surface area of a curve that's been rotated around the x-axis. So here is my curve, okay? And I've rotated it around the x-axis. So what I'm interested in is this area here, okay? And I'm going to, so that's the area all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer to that area uh, at the moment as delta A. Okay, so a little bit of area at the moment going around. So this point here, let's call that the point, um, let's call that point P, and it's going to have coordinates X, Y. Okay, and what we're going to have is that this horizontal distance here, we are going to have as delta X, and then this vertical distance will be delta y. And the distance between this point and this point, let's call that point q, uh, which has coordinates x plus delta x, y plus delta y. So this is a very similar picture to what we did when we were looking at arc length. And we're going to look at that distance there. And we're going to call that delta S, okay, where S is the arc length, okay? So, the idea is that the first thing that you could do is you could estimate the area, delta A, by saying, well, if we looked at this circle here, the circumference of that circle, then the circumference of that circle, because the height there is y, would be 2 pi y. Okay, so that would be the circumference of that circle, and if we multiplied that by delta s, then that would give us an approximation to the size of that area. Okay, now given the shape that we have here. Now, if you're a little bit too kind of like unsure about why I'm using delta S there, rather than, say, delta X, um, you might want to look at the formula for the error of a frustum. Okay, so uh, that's, that's kind of where this is coming, coming from behind the scenes. So, if I multiplied that circumference by that length, that would give me an estimate for delta A, but we can reasonably assume that that would be less than or equal to delta A. Right? It, it won't be larger. Because if uh, that part of the curve was a straight line, was a straight line, then these two things would be identical. This would just be the uh, surface area of a uh, cylinder. Now, you could also estimate it by looking at the circumference of this side, and then multiplying that by delta s. But of course, um, if we've just got a cylinder, then they'll be equal. But otherwise, we would get uh, a larger area. So we can write less than or equal to. Um, so the circumference there would be 2 pi times y plus delta y. Times by delta s. Okay? Now, if I divide through by delta s, I get 2 pi y is less than or equal to delta a over delta s is less than or equal to 2 pi y plus delta y. Okay? Now, as um, delta x tends to zero, okay, so as this shrinks, what we would be expecting to find is that delta S tends to zero also, okay, and we would also have that delta Y tends to zero. And what we had was that delta A over delta S would tend to dA over ds. 
So delta Y is tending to zero. Delta A over delta S is tending to dA by dS. And so what we're going to be left with is dA by dS is equal to 2 pi Y. OK, because if that's tending to zero, then you've got both sides the same of your inequality. We can then integrate. So A would be equal to the integral of 2 pi y ds, OK, because we're going to integrate with respect to s. At this point, we could use a substitution, a change of variables, and say that a is equal to the integral of 2 pi y ds by dx dx. Now, this is coming from... Um, if you've looked at parametric integration, which I guess you should have by this point, uh, then you should be familiar with being able to do that. Now, the ds by dx is what we met previously with the arc length. Now, if you remember, ds by dx uh, would be equal to um, the square root of 1 plus dy by dx all squared. So in Cartesian form, we can write that the area is equal to the integral of 2 pi y times the square root, let's just make myself some space, 1 plus dy by dx, all squared dx. So that's what it would be in Cartesian form. If instead we were working in parametric form, then at this stage, what I could have done is instead of introducing dx here, I could also have done dt. So I could have written this as ds by dt, dt. And then ds by dt was equal to... So, use it for board rubber instead. Was the integral of dx by dt all squared plus dy by dt all squared. So I can write the error as the integral of 2 pi y times the square root of dx by dt all squared plus dy by dt all squared dt. So we've got the Cartesian form for the surface area of the curve, and we've got the parametric form for the surface area of the curve. Okay, and so that's where the formulae come from.